Welcome everyone to another episode of Teaching While Talking. I'm Monkey, and today I'm being joined by... I'm Josh, I am Monkey's roommate, and been friends with him for many years. Yeah? It's been, what, ten-ish years I've known you? Mmm, probably. I mean, it was right after you moved up here. Started going to church at Abundant Life pretty soon after. Mm -hmm. I was already there, and... Yeah, sometime around that time frame. It might have been longer than 10 years. 12, you think? Yeah, maybe, maybe around then. What? About, well, see, 10th birthday, I went out of state. I'm 22. Uh, okay. So I want to say closer to, well, no, this is, I'm turning 23 this year. So yeah, about 12 years. You're an old man now. Oh, dad gone. <laughs> you know it. Um, yeah, about 12 years. All right. It's a good long time. Yeah. Yeah, I'm Josh. Uh, you know, despite having known each other for, you know, numerous years, we haven't actually hung out that much recently. Yeah. Um, that's kind of what happens when you move in with somebody. You think you're going to hang out with them a lot. But in the end, life takes over and nothing really changes in that. You know, I work constantly. And then I sleep so that I can get up and work again. Because that, that makes for a fun time. Oh, yeah. I... I, I Thoroughly enjoy working so yeah. much. No, no, <laughs> not not as much as that. No. All right. Working call centers just isn't a good time. What would you, what what job would you like to have? Like, what work would you like to do? I've always wanted to, I've always wanted my work to be my life, sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not necessarily a job. It's something that I'm always invested and in, involved in. Because um, when I get home, I am in no way invested in my call center work. At all. In fact, I stay as far away from phones as I can when I'm not at work. But um, what I would like to do, I, I enjoy teaching, which this show is nice for that. I like that. Of course. Um, but I do want to go back to school eventually and get a degree in education, maybe do some missions, um, get into the ministry again. I used to do a little bit of that, and just do something in the range of teaching. That's pretty exciting. Yeah, teaching's fun. You know that. <laughs> that I do. Yep. It's probably one of my favorite things to do. Yeah, and you do it well. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> but yeah, so um, the plan is to go back to college here in the near future, get a degree in education, and cool. see where that takes me. Do you know uh, what college you want to go to? Um, I'm probably going to go back um, to Oklahoma Okay. here pretty soon. You already know this, being my roommate and all, we've had to discuss that. Um, but I would like to go to maybe Oklahoma Christian um, or Oklahoma City. They're both OCUs. <laughs> both a heck of a lot cheaper than anything up in Seattle. Period. Which is mostly why I'm moving back. But... Um, they're both good schools. I'm looking into them a little bit more. I'm probably not going to start this fall. I start next spring, so I haven't done too much research because, you know, procrastinate, <laughs> wait right before I decide I want to start, and then dive right in. I feel that. Yeah. That, that's, that's close to my heart. Oh, oh, yeah. No, I get it. I mean, I, I've prepared so much for this the show that I'm helping to record with you. So much. Weeks in advance. I mean, I've been slaving over it all. <laughs> right. Which is funny, behind the scenes, because I've been asking Monkey what he wants me to teach. Like, to the day before I decided I was going to record with him. And in the end, he was just like, do whatever you want, do whatever you want. And I'm just keep going, Monkey, just give me something. I can teach on anything. Just give me something. He refused to. So I decided to teach on teaching. A little bit. A, a kind of in a roundabout way. Okay. Do yeah. you want to go into that? Sure. Um, dive right in. Um, what's near and dear to my heart is um, children's ministry. It's sure. One of the things. When I was a children's pastor um, a couple years ago for a short time. It was a great time. I loved it. Um, it was at a church plant, which was insane and time-consuming and destroyed my life, but in a good way. I learned a lot. 
I got to affect some lives, I like to think. And it was a good time. But one of the reasons I got into the children's ministry side of it is because I remember growing up, some of the things that I was taught, and they weren't always entirely accurate. And because of that, that, that bugged me as I grew older. Um, nobody likes to learn that they've been lied to, whether the lie was purposeful or not. I mean, nobody likes that. And so that's always kind of been something that I don't want to do. Um, there's that wonderful verse in Matthew um, that says, It is better to um, tie a millstone around your neck and be cast into the sea than to lead one of these astray in reference to um, generally children. And although some of the things I'm going to speak about is not necessarily going that far as to, hey, we, we, just, we need to just jump overboard now. Mm -hmm. But there's, there's still some weight in that. Like one of the big things when I was a kid, I was, in any of you out there who's been in Sunday school, in church their entire life, you grow up and you hear all these stories that are kidified. And there's nothing wrong with that. We, we don't need to be talking about some of the goriest and bloodiest battles in the Bible to five and six-year-olds, or at least go into those details. However, we do still need to be careful about what we teach them. Like, one of the first stories you learn, Adam and Eve, right? The creation yeah. of the world, seven days, all that jazz, right? And at the end of it, what God did in the Bible to create Eve, he put Adam to sleep for a little bit, took a rib out of his side, and boom, there's Eve, there's a helper, hooray! Women were created, and the world was a much better place. <laughs> but um, in the Sunday school classes that I, that I was in, you learn, I was taught, and this isn't across the board, this isn't everywhere, but what I was taught is that because of this, men in general have one less rib than women. Like, as a biological, from then on, all the babies, boy babies had one less rib than female babies. And that's something that I was taught, and that was actually believed by the people that was teaching me. It wasn't until many years later, I'm talking fourth or fifth grade, when I was sitting in a biology class, and I was looking at the diagrams, and we were just discussing the human body, and we were talking about how many ribs people had. And I noticed that he didn't differentiate between guys have this many ribs and girls have this many ribs. Mm. It's, in fact, we have the same base number of ribs. Genetic fun stuff can cause the random person to have one fewer, one more, that sort of thing. Of course. But it's not a strict biological male have one less, female have one more. And that was mind-blowing to me. I mean absolutely astonishing because I had grown up thinking that well I had a one less rib than any of the girls I have ever met and it's not a big thing like I said this isn't something that was a salvation issue or even something that was super like changed the way I viewed the world but I remember when I learned that I'm just like whoa well they were wrong what else were they wrong about mm. And I put that just little seed of, of doubt in my mind. And that little seed was actually good for me personally in the long run because it made me want to study more, study more on just my own, on when I find a fact out, okay, I'm going to look into this a little bit more. And that helped later on outside of not just the church, but in school. Because this doesn't just happen in the church. I'm not trying to throw the church on the bus and say they're the only people who do this. I mean, how many of you out there in Monkey celebrate Columbus Day? I mean, I haven't actually celebrated it in a while. I used to work for um, the city. I used to work for, like, the government and um, federal government, city government a couple times. And I loved Columbus Day just for the fact that I got a day off. I mean, it was just a day. I didn't have to go into work, sleep in a little bit. It was nice. But as a kid growing up, you're taught about the story of Christopher Columbus, this great adventurer who defied all odds. He was sailing on what everybody believed was a flat earth, but he was, no, the earth is not flat. I'm going to discover and prove this, find the new world, or go to India, accidentally found the new world, was awesome and just like, oh yeah, we're going to show the world this thing that I found. 
And he was this great guy, supposedly. Well, on your own research, outside of school, you learn, well, he wasn't a great guy. He, one, nobody thought the world was flat at that point. Or at least the very low, uneducated masses who couldn't even read at that point might have believed that. But in general, the knowledgeable community knew the world was round. That was a Greek thing. That was back in Greek times. They were just like, well, of course the world's round. What else would it be? But we're taught that he was to go and discover this for the first time. He was the first person to discover the Americas. He was the first person to do this, and he was just a great adventurer and a kind and great-hearted person. When, when he actually found us, he brought slaves back, was all about finding gold and other precious resources, killed native populations, the whole nine yards. But we still are taught as kids in school that he was this great adventurer. And I have nothing against great adventurers. I love stories about great adventurers. But I also want to hear about the truth. And there are many, many people out there that you can get concepts and ideas out while still telling the truth. Mm. And I know that's something that you're passionate about. Oh, yeah. I don't want to go too long into that. And I do recommend researching this on your own and all these things, not just about Christopher Columbus and how many ribs we have, but just on everything, on the things that if you're an adult and have children in school, look at the curriculum, double check and know what they're being taught. Um, what your church family, talk to your children's pastors and the people in the Sunday school. Make sure that they're not leading children to believe something that's not entirely accurate. We need to double check this. And any younger people who are watching this, do your research on everything you're being taught. Everything that's coming out of my mouth, do your own research on. And like, it, like I was saying before I got on that little tangent, <laughs> I know that's also something that you're very big on. You, you are all about storytelling and teaching in that. Oh, absolutely. Um, and building off of that, what I'm really passionate about, like you're really passionate about teaching accurate information. For me, I'm all about like teaching morals mm -hmm. and like ideas, concepts, and what people believe, right? Mm -hmm. And particularly... Um, like with children yeah. and in like a family setting is where I think it's really important to have this sort of storytelling. Right? Okay. So going back to even like ancient times, like storytelling has been like a very useful tool. Yeah. Like what's a story from, from your childhood? Like maybe what's a story you heard growing up? Oh, well, just a story, Any story I heard growing up. I mean, any of them, the gingerbread man, I mean, you hear that story of the guy running, um, Hansel and Gretel, mm -hmm. um, Rapunzel, any of those Brother Grimm sort of things. Yeah. Yeah. Each of those stories has, like, some sort of message mm -hmm. in them. Like, with Hansel and Gretel, right? Yeah. It's, it's sort of about, like, stranger danger. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Don't just go wandering into somebody's home. Or inside, maybe a witch who's going to eat you. Even if it is made of candy. Even if the house is made of candy. Like a... Uh, this is sad, but like uh, a modern retelling of that might be like Hansel and Gretel and the van with free candy. Yeah. Right? The yeah. van made of candy. That's, that's basically what that is. Uh, yeah, essentially. Yeah. Just not always as happy of an ending. As yeah. killing the witch and getting away. Absolutely. That's, that's like the best possible outcome of that story. <laughs> um, but the story is important to yeah. tell, to be like, hey, you know, just because something looks good mm -hmm. and you're wandering around doesn't mean it's safe. Yeah. Because somebody may try to eat you. And nobody wants to get eaten. Eight. Et. I don't want to get et. I'm going to use et. All right. All right. Um, but it's, it's not just that story. It's a lot of other stories. Um, uh, like going back to the Greeks or something like Icarus, right? Mm -hmm. Who like made these wax wings and flew up too close to the sky. 
Uh, but the problem was, he his his dad had been telling him, "Don't do this. This is dangerous." Yeah. And then he did it. Don't fly too high. And then he died. Yeah. Because his wax wings melted and he fell to the earth and died. Yeah. Uh, so that's a story with the moral of <laughs> like, hey, listen to your parents. <laughs> Do what they tell you and don't, like, be careful of what they warn you of because if you don't, you may just think you're going for something awesome and then, you know, die. Yeah. yeah. A lot of these stories end with death. Yeah, they, they generally do. Yeah. yeah. But um, even with that, with storytelling, I mean, Columbus makes a great story, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, like kind of bringing it around. I mean, the story that we're told is great. This, this adventurer who is going against all odds with the, what, the Cinta, the, you know them, I don't, we've already had this discussion, the Pinta, the Santa Maria, and the Nina? I know I said that out of order, and the order matters, but, <laughs> but he t we tell this great story of that, and the message behind it is great. Absolutely. I mean, going and seeking out truth, and seeking out what you believe, and all that fun stuff. The message is great, but to kind of go back and combine with what you're talking about, the message isn't entirely, isn't the only thing that matters. Because accuracy also does. I could tell this great story about how Christopher Columbus was this great guy and get people to, get children especially, to be like, I want to be just like him. They find out a couple years down the road that he was a horrible person mm. who slaughtered many and caused the downfall of a couple, or at least helped along in the downfall of a couple civilizations, they no longer want to be like that, and they've lost a hero. When you can talk about whether fictional or real people who have done these great things, personally, I'm going to read, like, The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings and those sort of books to my kids, if and when I have kids, when they as they're going to bed, because I love the morals and what those stories teach. But at the same time, I also don't want to teach them Christopher Columbus because I want them to also know the truth. Mm. I, I definitely understand that. And I think we're both agreeing here that yeah. we need to have these two things together. Exactly. Like, there needs to be this storytelling, uh, particularly for kids, but mm -hmm. I think also oh, yeah. just even amongst, like, friends growing up or whatever, like, stories are a really useful tool to... Like, teach an idea or some sort of lesson mm -hmm. uh, without directly saying, like, hey, if you disobey me, you're going to die. Yeah. Right? Exactly. I mean, that's exactly the point. And fiction is one of the better ways to do that because we all know it's fiction, but we also get the ideas. I am a heavy advocate of fiction. Um and I don't think that at all in any way disrupts the factual statements that I was like to make earlier. Because by knowing it's fiction, by going in and saying, hey, I'm going to tell you the story and that's all it is, mm -hmm. I can still get meanings across. Yet in a school setting, in a church setting, in something where we're trying to get more than just meaning down, I had the other quotation behind the couch, um, we need to make sure we're going on facts as well as that. Absolutely. Yeah. No. <laughs> we, we, we got this, right? We get, yeah. Yeah. We know what we're talking about. We know about. what we're talking about. And I hope you figured out what you we were talking about along the way. Basically, it comes down to uh, kids retain what they learn as they grow up. Yes. Yeah? Yes. So it's, so it's important to teach them when they are most ready to learn. Of course. So part of that is teaching life lessons, teaching stories, teaching morals, right? Mm -hmm. Stranger danger. Stranger danger. Great right. thing to learn. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, but also with what you're saying, it's important to teach like factual, accurate information mm -hmm. instead of like the like we were to go back to Columbus. We're, we're gonna beat up on this yeah. guy, and he he deserves it after all this time. To talk about like exploring and encouraging kids to find new things, mm -hmm. and even not just kids, but people in general, to encourage them to say, go and find something. Yeah. Like explore, even if it's 
something that's already been discovered by someone else because it's not like there weren't people in America. Exactly. But it was something new to him and from where he was from. Yeah. That's something really cool and something you should go and do. But you should also get the lesson from the the accurate Columbus story. Yeah. Of sometimes when you pursue something new, you need to be careful to not, you know, do what Columbus did. Yeah. Get greedy and decide, well, I could discover things and be nice and bring two civilizations together. Or I could murder all these people and take their stuff. But, I mean, it comes down to that. It's just... Be careful what you teach. Be careful how you teach it. But do teach. But definitely teach. Teach through stories. A kid is not going to learn as well when you just give them a list of Christopher Columbus's achievements. <laughs> or if you just give them a list of every U.S. president. I mean, they can memorize and learn that. But we know certain presidents by name, Abraham Lincoln, George Washington, by their actions. By what they did. In most of these stories, maybe not George Washington and the Cherry Tree, but most of these stories that we learn about these people are accurate to a large degree. Like Abraham Lincoln, everything I've ever learned about this guy, the stuff that like sticks with me of what he did during that time frame, only gets more detailed and refined as I learned more. Very rarely is something contradicted. Mm. Well... Thank you, Josh, for being on the show. It was great having you. Thank you for having me. It was great to be on the show, talk a little bit for a little while about teaching and stuff. Yeah, I uh, definitely, hope to, <laughs> definitely hope to have you on the show again sometime. Oh, yeah. Oh, most definitely. Um, I mean, I'm moving away, but I'll be around for a little while yet, and I'm not just moving away forever. I'm coming back. We'll find a way to make it work. Exactly. Well, thank you all for watching. This has been uh, Teaching While Talking. Have a good day. Bye.